Welcome to Language Games Podcast. My name is John Kaus. Today is part 10 of our Van Til's Apologetics series. Last week, we demonstrated that Christianity is a sufficient foundation for knowledge. Today, we're going to demonstrate that Christianity is the only sufficient foundation for knowledge. Which brings us to Axiom 5. And this reads, The Bible plainly teaches that all anti-Christian worldviews are sufficient or insufficient foundations for knowledge. All right, so what is an anti-Christian worldview? Anti-Christian worldview is a worldview that contradicts Christianity. So what's a worldview? A worldview is a philosophy of life, an interpretation of reality. Who is man? What is the world? What is man's place in the world? Etc. All right, so the Bible plainly teaches that all anti-Christian worldviews are insufficient foundations for knowledge. And if you read through the Bible, this is fairly obvious, but I'm just going to give you some verses just to show, to show this to be plainly taught. All right, Psalm 36, 9, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. So it's in God's light that we have light. Any truth that we have, whether you're a believer or unbeliever, has to uh, be God's truth. It cannot be the world's truth or our truth. It's in God's light that we see light. So there is no interpretation of reality that's anti-Christian that can account for reality. Proverbs 21, 30, There is no wisdom nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. There is no understanding of the world against the Lord. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the truth. There is no true interpretation of the world outside of Christ. 1 Corinthians 1, 20, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Paul, probably looking on the history of philosophy, He's saying, look, the, the, the wisdom of the world, trying to interpret the world, trying to have a sufficient foundation for knowledge that's contrary to Christianity, contrary to God's interpretation of the world, is foolishness. It is false. 2 Corinthians 10.5, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We are to cast down every high thing, every imagination that's against the knowledge of God. Colossians 2, 3 through 4, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Colossians 2, 8, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You are to beware of philosophies, interpretations of the world that are not after Christ, that are after the rudiments of the world. So all anti-Christian worldviews are insufficient foundations for knowledge. They are false. We are not to follow them. All right, the Bible plainly teaches this. Now we can infer then from this that if one can demonstrate that an anti-Christian worldview is a sufficient foundation for knowledge, then one can demonstrate that the Bible teaches a falsehood. So we infer theorem two from axiom five. All right, and then we're going to take theorem two and we're going to pair it with axiom four, which is no one can demonstrate that the Bible teaches a, a plan. Sorry, axiom four is no one can demonstrate that the Bible plainly teaches a falsehood. Okay, so now notice this then. If one can demonstrate that an anti-Christian worldview is a sufficient foundation for knowledge, then one can demonstrate that the Bible teaches a falsehood. But axiom four says you can't do that. No one can demonstrate that the Bible teaches a falsehood. So through modus tollens, we can then infer no one can demonstrate that an anti-Christian worldview is a sufficient foundation for knowledge. All right, now someone comes along, this is typically atheist, they get frustrated in these conversations and they just say, oh, all right, oh, fine, fine, I'll be a modern day prophet. I'll create my own worldview, my own anti-Christian worldview that will account for knowledge and there, that, then you'll be refuted. And I, to that I say, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, see if you can do it. I know you can't do it, okay? I know, I know there is no anti-Christian worldview that is sufficient for knowledge, but if you think that you can go ahead and create a worldview that this God who you now are claiming is gonna speak, he's been silent for 6,000 years of recorded history, and he's gonna speak through you, and you're gonna give us this truth, great, go ahead. What's gonna happen is he's not gonna do it because he can't do it. Okay, but what the atheist is trying to do is he's trying to trying to get you, right? He's trying to say like, hey, we, we could do this. I, I, I fine, I can do this. 
right? It's similar to the objection of there could be a, a refutation to this position. There could be, you know, some objection to this axiom that I don't know of, okay, this, which is completely arbitrary. He has no good reason uh, for this, and he doesn't have an actual revelation. He's just saying it to see what I'll say. And so instead of trying to dance around it, just own it. Say, fine, make good on this and come back to me when, when, you, when you do. You won't, but, you know, good luck. Have fun. All right. So axiom four, theorem two, lead to theorem uh, three, which brings us to axiom six. If Christianity is a sufficient foundation for knowledge and no one can demonstrate that an anti-Christian worldview is a sufficient foundation for knowledge, then Christianity is the only sufficient foundation for knowledge. So it follows, or it is implied, so, so if Christianity is a sufficient foundation for knowledge and no one can demonstrate that an anti-Christian worldview is a sufficient foundation for knowledge, then what follows from that is that Christianity is the only sufficient foundation for knowledge. Now someone says, I want to reject that. I deny this implication. Okay, if you deny the implication, then what you're saying is that the left side, the antecedent, can be true and the right side can be false. Well, let's see if that works. If the right side is false, Christianity is the only sufficient foundation for knowledge is false, then you must have an example of an anti-Christian worldview, right, that is, a, that is a sufficient foundation for knowledge. But you can't have that. You can't give an example because the antecedent says no one can, can demonstrate that an anti-Christian worldview is a sufficient foundation for knowledge. So to, to give an example to show the consequent is false, uh, you'd have to actually give one, and, but you said you can't do that and you affirm the antecedent. So this implication is undeniable. And it really goes back to, can you, all this traces back to really axiom four. Can you show that the Bible teaches a falsehood? Which you can't. All right, so someone says, hey, but this axiom could be false, which is the same objection that we, we went through a few sessions ago. Bonson has a good uh, point on, or take on this. He writes, unbelievers who have for the most part abandoned rationality, not desiring to make sense or think clearly, or have become indifferent to giving reasons for what they believe, have thereby stepped outside of the circle of apologetical concern. Amen. All right, so now with this axiom, notice we've already proven the left side. We've already proven Christianity is a sufficient foundation for knowledge, that's theorem one. And theorem three, no one can demonstrate that an anti-Christian worldview is a sufficient foundation for knowledge. So through modus ponens, we can detach the right side, we can detach the consequent in axiom six, and infer that Christianity is the only sufficient foundation for knowledge. Notice, this is, this is a, a big step in the argument. We are proving now that Christianity is the only sufficient foundation for knowledge without having to go through every single one of them. Now, some people will react to this, uh, Bantillians, <laughs> a little saddened. And it's like, well, hey, what about these particular refutations? And I, I'm not against that at all. Okay, Bonson has some of the best examples of refuting Hindus or Buddhists or materialists uh, to, to the, many times to their face, right? Interacting with them and refuting them. And, and that's wonderful. I'm not against that at all. But notice though, when you refute one, you haven't refute all, refu refuted all the other anti-Christian worldviews, right? We still have to get to that Christianity is the only one. And you can't do that by knocking down individual ones, which Bonson even admits to. All right, so this is the much stronger position that there are none, right? There are no other sufficient anti-Christian anti worldviews that are sufficient for knowledge. Now, I may have to refute an individual one because someone who comes up to me brings an example. But notice though, I'm not proving this position by doing that. I'm just illustrating what I already knew to be true. So I'm not against particular reputations. They're needed and they're great, but they're illustrating what we already know to be true at this point. All right, so then from axiom six and then theorems one and three, we infer theorem four. And we're gonna stop here for now. Next week, we'll finish the proof and then we're gonna go through some simpler ways to present the argument. So how would you present the argument to a seven-year-old? And how would you present it to a teenager? How would you present it then to a college person? So we're gonna go through different levels of, com of, of complexity. And then we'll continue on. For more content like this, you can find us on x at underscore language games. See you next time.